You're now tuned into the Lit Podcast. Keep it locked. If I could start my life over, go back into time, I would fix every wrong, change every line, do it the right way, the better way, love a little more. Faith is the key that opens up all doors. If I can let go of the past and reach for my future, I need the most high directing me of my future when I lay the rest. My pain will be over, I wish sometimes I can start my life all over. Yo, 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 welcome to the Lit Podcast, where we motivate inspire, help you when you're feeling low, and also help you to know God. Yo, it's been a minute since I have done the um, Lit Podcast, but it's been a lot of stuff that I've been um, doing lately, and really, it's best for me to just kind of do stuff in pieces, because you know me, I'm the type that will pretty much do everything at once, so it's like time to break it up into different seasons. You know, I'm working on my um, mixtape, Lost in Transition Volume 2, is coming August 13th, DLS Music is back. So yeah, I'm very excited about that project, so that's what I've been working on, and God has been really putting it on my heart to do the um this portion of the lit podcast called the battlefield of the mind and um i mean it's been on my heart it's really been on my heart heavy in the last month or so but it's it's just god has just been really beating this in my head like do the podcast do the podcast and um this morning as i was uh getting um getting up and getting ready i thought about insecurities and um I just feel led to really just tell you my story on um, being insecure, very insecure, super insecure. Um, growing up, you know, I I lived, you know, I raised, born and raised, and this is impromptu. There's no scripting, no nothing. So if I stood on some some, hey, it is what it is. It's just really off the dome. It's just really from my heart. So growing up in Dallas. Um, I live, you know, down the street from Roosevelt High School. I wouldn't even just say a poverty-stricken area, but, you know, we were okay. And um, lived in a two-bedroom house, you know, um, during the time, you know, the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, in that neighborhood, you know, it was always, you know, with the fashion statement, if you didn't have this... Thing going on. If you didn't wear the nice J's, if you didn't have, you know, back in the day it was the tall T's, if you didn't have nice stuff on, you were looked at as nothing. And growing up, I didn't have those type of things. We didn't, me and my brother, we didn't have those, those kind of things. We didn't, um, you know, we didn't have the latest fashion and all this other stuff. And for me, that was insecure. Um, you know, backstory after my mom had passed away, um, it really messed me up. Um, and for the longest, I was trying to search for love in all the wrong places. I was always mad. You know, I always had, you know, these these visions and dreams of getting married and, you know, being with that right woman, having, you know, a family and stuff like that. So I always thought about that because I always looked at, you know, how my mom and my dad was. And I always say stuff like, you know, when whenever I have a family that I will, you know, we know we not going to live like this. We're going to I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to hustle, the, you know, the way I can hustle the legal way and to, you know, get what we need. And throughout school, I was always getting rejected. I was always getting fat shamed and height shamed. And um, and I was like, you know, it really discouraged me for so many years that, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not six feet. I can't help that. That's the way God made me. And that's what uh, um, that's what I recently heard. And I was like, you know what? God made me this way. So that's how I'm going to do it. Then I started looking at different athletes and different, I mean, different stars. They're short, shorter than me, but they getting the women. But it's like, it's because of the money. And I started to gravitate to try to be like them because of the fact that they're getting the women. But guess what? I was looking for love in all the wrong places, but I was 
insecure. Fast forward, um, you know, I was very overweight. Um, I was wearing at least about 240. Uh, four, I was wearing a 4X t-shirt, um, 44-inch um, pants. I'll never forget when I went to prom. I, I I got roasted. I got roasted because I had this all blue suit on. And, you know, <laughs> I thought I was looking cool. But um, I got roasted because they said I look like Morpheus. And um, But at the time, I was wearing a 4X t-shirt, 44-inch waist, pants. So thinking about somebody that's 5'4", 240-some pounds, probably more than that because I could not control my eating because I was always depressed. Um, that big and, you know, with this big old coat on, I was like, I'm not going to be able to get no women. But I thought in my head, if I just look good, most of the times in my life, I thought if I just look good on the outside that I will really feel good on the inside. But guess what? It starts with the inside. Ain't nothing wrong with looking good on the outside as long as your inside tells you that you look good. I've seen so many different people that have, um, that you or other people say, yo, that don't, you know, that person not good looking and stuff like that, but they have all the confidence in the world. And that's what I struggle with for um, so many years. So I, um, Started to lose weight. I did something simple because I'm dealing with asthma all of my life. All I did was just walk. All I did was just um, walk. I literally stopped eating meat for like four months. Four months. I literally just stopped eating meat. I was literally a vegetarian. No, no chicken, no beef, no pork, no nothing. I just stopped doing it. And next thing you know, I started dropping weight like crazy. I lost... I think almost a hundred pounds in four months. Not no. I think maybe fifty to seventy. Fifty to seventy because I was two forty, but I got so little. I think the low, littlest I've ever been when I weighed in was one forty seven. So nearly a hundred pounds total from when I was um, originally two hundred and forty pounds. That was a tremendous drop. I mean, I got so skinny, I started to look like, I started to look, I ain't gonna say the word crackhead, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I just said it. I, I started looking like a crackhead, and um, and I was like, dang, I'm a little too skinny. And then, because I did not have that, that security inside of me, I started to think, you know, I started seeing women <laughs> attracted to dudes that are a little, you know, a lot more buff. You know, uh, have a little bit more meat on their bones and skinny and stuff like that. So, I started to try to gain muscle. Gain, you know, um, yeah, pretty much gain muscle. And going to the gym all the time. Working out, working out. I mean, from like the 2007. Psh, I can't even remember the time that I just like stopped working out. I mean, it's just constantly building muscle, building muscle. Then I started to, you know, um, take a lot of pictures, do a lot of videos on social media. You know, I was a part of the, uh, uh, herbal life. I was, uh, we was doing the fit camps. I was always posting. I was like, yo, look at me. I'm working out. I got the guns. I got all this other stuff. Boy, look at, I'm taking pictures shirtless. I'm like, yeah, but I still was dealing with something internally. Internally, I still was feeling insecure because of the fact that I will think that I, I'm, I look good enough. I can go and try to highlight this girl and all of a sudden I still get rejected. And then I will let their rejection put me back into a mindset of I don't think I'm worth it. I don't think that, you know, that I'm, I'm just, you know, ugly. I'm just so insecure that I can't get nobody in life because it was something that I was dealing with internally. That's what I, that's what I'm really just getting out this video. I'm letting you know, no, you know, no shame to anybody. Stuff that people go through a lot of the times is internally is what we go through is what we go through when it comes to insecurities. And sometimes insecurities can cause a lot of thoughts can make, you know, to make them act out of character. It's something that's dealing with internally. 
fast forward. Um, got um got in a relationship, got married. Then I started, you know, not really going to the gym. I was saying before that, I really, I really wasn't going to the gym a lot. And then um, my wife at the time, she was like, you're not going to the gym a lot. You know, you're not going there. And then I pretty much let myself go. And I went from like maybe 165, 170 to like 185. Then I started thinking, oh, well, I've got the girl and stuff like that. But guess what? My health was messing up. Now, matter of fact, let's rewind. My health was messing up. And then I was keep on pushing to try to, um, you know, look good. But internally, I was messing up. My asthma, was, I was always in the doctor. I was always doing this and I was always doing that. And I always had to go to the hospital because internally I was messed up. And then after I lost the weight, then I gained the weight back. Because, you know, they, they always say this statistic of, you know, you putting on happy weight and stuff like that. You know, for me, that wasn't that wasn't really good for me because it was really messing my physical body up, <laughs> especially dealing with, you know, the stuff that I was dealing with. And then um, after that tragic situation happened, which I ain't going to really go into detail. If you know me, you know the story. Um I literally just started drinking like crazy. I mean, like I said it in my, I said it in one of the freestyle with Dax and also using that verse on another song. I even said it in some of my recent music about how heavy I was drinking to try to cope with the pain because it was something I was dealing with internally. I felt all insecure. I was like, wow, I'm back alone. Um, I mean, I don't know what to do. I just stayed off the, you know, dating scene for a long time. And it's just like, I'm just alone. And, you know, I just have friends and stuff like that. And I just felt so insecure. Always looking in the mirror. It got, it got so bad to where every time I would eat, I would sit there. And look in the mirror and I will weigh myself every single day. Every single day. That is the worst thing that you can do. Because I noticed that like, if I drink a half a gallon of water right now, I may, I may be 173. If I drink a whole half gallon or to a gallon of water right now, guess what? I'm probably going to be 174, 175. Guess what? It's not really the scale that, um, you know, that's going to determine your real weight. It's really on how you look. Because there be people that's the same weight as me and nearly the same size. But guess what? They're ripped. It's not really the scale. It's, you know, how much, you know, it's the body fat, you know, ratio. You know, how much body fat that you have on you, you know, versus, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the actual weight, if you, if you have less body fat, guess what? You know, you're going to look a lot better, but see, I didn't know that. And so I would constantly do this same motion. I would sit there, you know, after eating, I would do this. I would literally do this to see if my stomach had went out a little bit. And then if it did, I'm like, Oh my goodness, I'm fat. I'm getting fat again. I know, I know most men is not going to really, you know, talk about insecurities, you know, for what I see, but a lot of just, you know, men, we like to keep it in. We like to say that, you know, you know, we got this and we, we secure and we strong and we all this other stuff. But sometimes when you are dealing with insecurities, then this is going to the men. You got to let it out. You got to talk about it. You got to talk to, you know, talk to somebody. If you have a, if you can connect with another brother and um, another sister, you know, aunt or, you know, your actual brother, your dad, you know, talk to somebody about that and get that stuff out of your system. Now we're going, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up on the weight loss thing. I started doing vegan last year and I noticed there's a huge significance in my energy, in the um, overall health. I'm just going to say energy and overall health and even the weight. 
Um, I have two torn rotator cuffs. I had a surgery last year on my rot- right rotator cuff, and I also had a surgery on my foot. If it wasn't for me eating better and even trying to, con- you know, consistently live the lifestyle of, you know, eating a lot better, um, researching on different um, vitamins, different vegetables and stuff that's going to be beneficial to my body, I will be in a lot more pain than what I am right now. I'm going to say that again. If it wasn't for me researching, you know, the things that God put on this earth to put in my body to fuel it naturally, I would be in a lot more pain than where I'm at right now. I'm in pain right now. You can't tell it because of the fact that, you know, even though growing up, it was not, you know, it was gross to drink beets. It was uh, gross to um, drink all of this other stuff, you know, like. Um, even yesterday got some, you know, natural lemonade, you know, lemonade. I realized that lemonade is more on the sour than the super sweet, but we learned to put so much sugar and stuff into our food and it's just messing our bodies up. And I was like, wow, it just pretty much an eye opener just on me not. And it's, and it sucks for me to not really being able to exercise, live, Do all of this other stuff like I used to do. But guess what? Now, I'm secure in myself. Like, you know what? I'm not doing this to look good for people. I'm doing this for my health. No, I got all of these injuries and stuff like that. I'm doing this for my health. And and, uh, and guess what? In the midst of, you know, me doing this for my health, I'm slimming down and I'm um, looking lean. And they're like, what you doing, man? I'm just changing up, man. I'm just, it's not just a diet, it's a lifestyle. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> um, Now we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. This is all impromptu. That's why you're probably like, where's he going with this? Um, You know, growing up, I was all, you know, the, the you know, the generation with the braids. You always, you always hear the term, you got to have waves for the babes. So I was always, you know, brushing my hair, had a wave cap, you know, 360 wave grease and all of that other stuff. Let me make sure I'm still in the frame. Um, so, so I'm brushing my hair like crazy. I know I'm brushing my hair so much to where I, I know I probably had some muscles. Even when I was big, I know I probably had some muscles and just brushing my hair like crazy. And so then it came into the, um, I, let me see, what was it about? The 2005, 2004, I'll say 2003 to 2005, maybe 2006, when the braids was like rocking. So I grew out my hair. I had the braids. I thought I was going to look cool and stuff like that. <laughs> and that that was an epic fail. That was an epic fail. So I went back down to the low haircuts and, you know, trying to get them waves and stuff right. You know, um, my mom's side of the family is Cherokee Indian, so I am I am Cher I have actual Cherokee blood in my system. I, I also I have a green card and all that. You know everything. I'm not just saying it. And so I thought, you know, maybe I could have you know the wavy hair just like my aunties and uncles. You know, they got the oh man, and you know that that didn't happen. <laughs> and so, um, going into my thirties. Um, I started to like lose my hair. Um, my my hairline started to recede, and I was trying everything. I was trying everything. I was going to the barber. I was getting. A, I was starting getting like the. I would tell them to kind of like um, around her, like or it started to like go backwards a little bit. So I would tell them that leave that patch right there, and then cut. All around, you know, around it. So it kind of looked like it was even. So they was doing a lot of blending. They was doing this. Um, and then I always try to keep the smooth face and stuff like that. You know, baby face and all that other stuff. Never really just grew out my beard. And, um, and so it, it started with that. And then, like, when the um, introduction of the, like, the, the spray on stuff, that started getting popular. So... I had that sprayed in my head, and then when I started to go to the gym, I was <laughs> working out. All of a sudden, that stuff started getting all on the machine. Then 
I tried the um, hair fibers, and this was back in 2017, 2016, 2017. And so I tried the hair fibers. I tried everything to try to save my hair. Um, and then when the pandemic had happened, that's when, you know, I couldn't get no haircut for a while. I was literally like, yo, what am I going to do? And then my hair just started to grow out. And then I was having these big patches and then I had this big old patch right here. I mean, big old patch. I'm sitting here looking like crusted the clown up in here. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, I don't even, man. And I kept brushing it, brushing it, brushing it, brushing it, trying to get that to go up. And I started to become internally insecure again because I'm like, I don't look good anymore. My hair lines are receding and stuff like that. Fast forward. Last year, I decided to just go bald. I just go to go bald. You know, um, I noticed that my dad, he held on to his head, to his hair, like in his 50s, 40, late 40s, 50s. I'll say maybe 50s, actually. No, late 40s. I'm not, I need to make sure I get that right. And then he had like two big old patches and stuff. And and I was like, wow, I'm gonna, I was going to end up like that anyway because, you know, dad's bald, you know, my uncle, you know, some of my uncles is bald. And so I was like, I had to really embrace it because it's like, why? I'm sitting here trying everything to hold on to some hair that eventually is going to keep falling off. I mean... I mean, I couldn't help it. It was, you know, genetically happening. But I did. But when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Oh, yeah, let me let me kind of rewind again. This is impromptu. I had the... It got so bad what I was doing the spray, doing the hair fibers. I even take the vitamins. I was looking up everything I can do to grow my hair. I had the dirt. I have the dermal roll in there. I even got the laser cap. I spent 500 some dollars on a laser cap. To try to get my hair back. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just cut it bald. Next thing you know, I'm getting so many compliments on the bald head. And like, it suits me. It looks good on you. But after a while, it was like I felt free from all of the, you know, the um, stress on trying to do what I can to get my hair to look right. Like this morning, this morning, this is what I did. I woke up this morning. I was like, man, I ain't been able to make it to no barber. And I was like, you know what? Let me do this myself. I got clippers. I got clippers. I got edges. I even got shavers. I even recently bought the stuff to clean the shavers and stuff. So I, I did it on my own. And I'm like, hey, I'm accepting it. Sometimes in life, you got to let those things go. Even if it's some is 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 hair. I know a lot of, you know, a lot of women are, you know, dealing with that um alopecia. I know I might have butchered that and you know a lot of women will hold on to that and then it just like now they just like, you know what, forget it. My hair is falling out. I can't do nothing, you know, can't do nothing about it. So they're just going to cut it off. That's exactly how, you know, I felt, you know, as a man, like, you know what, I, I don't need to hold on to this. And, you know, not to shame anybody that's, you know, getting no man wigs and stuff like that. That's not me. I even thought about that, too. I even thought about the whole man wig and stuff to try to, you know, and, and I started to think, like, you know what, that's man law violation. Because that's putting too much stuff on your, you know, that the glue and all that stuff on your scalp. That's really, to me, it's not really healthy to you. So it's like, if you ball, if you ball in the middle, dude, just just shave, just shave it off. Just just shave it off, and you will feel so much better. I know I feel so much better because I am free now. I'm not insecure. I am secure in myself. I am secure in God. And I'm no longer <laughs> lost in transition. So, yeah, this is my um, story about being insecure, man. Um, I pray that it just, you know, help those 
you know, who dealing with insecurities, man. Whoever dealing with insecurities, man, holler at me, you know, inbox me just, you know, so we can talk about it or pray about it. Or just, you know, just like, because dealing with insecurities is not fun. It's been so many suicidal rates with young kids, man, and it's and it's crazy, man. So if you wanna if if you're dealing with depression, insecurities, if you're dealing with something that happened in your past that you feel that you're that you are ashamed, you know, to talk to people about, man, talk, man, get that get with somebody that's not gonna judge you. Get with somebody that is you know, godly that's going to give you that God advice, the spiritual advice of what the spirit is going to tell you, show you that you are secure, that you are worth it in him. Get with those people and talk to them because, you know, this rate has been going crazy, especially in our young children. So we have to speak up talk about it, let them hear our story, don't matter how crazy it sounds, no matter if people seem like, you know, you might think that they gonna judge you, man, let it out, that is for my men and women, men, stop holding it in, stop holding it in, stop trying to be so tough, I'm gonna say it again, stop trying to be so tough, let it out, let, you know, women know, you know, let, show vulnerability, show that, you know, hey, man, I cry at times, man, that, you know, um, I get sad at times, you know, that, um, you know, that I, I, I might feel a little insecure on today, man, but don't do stuff to be seen. Don't do stuff just to look good for people, but do stuff for you. Be healthy for you. Lose weight for you. If you have to get your head shaved off, guess what? Do it for you and no one else. This is Derek Silman, The Lit Podcast, and I'm out. I've been running from my